So we are now doing the 2012 released free response question number one, part D. So we've been working with uh, this uh, bathtub full of water that's progressively getting warmer. In part D it says for 20 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 25. So when we see that, we really want to say for t between 20 and 25, including the endpoints. The function w that models the water temperature has derivative given by, and then they give us w prime of t, and they give us this function. So now they've finally given us a function. Everything in parts a, b, c, and d, we had to do off the table. Now they give us a function, but notice that we could not have gone back and used this function for a, b, c, and d because this function is only valid for t between 20 and 25. And so far, all their questions have been asking about 0 to 20, 0 to 20, 0 to 20. And the data they give us is 0 to 20. So now we're asked to go beyond this data and use this function to tell us what's happening out here as we go to 25 minutes of time. So, uh, the way we're going to approach this is they've given us a derivative. They've given us the rate at which that water temperature is warming up. So we ought to be able to look at the fact that the temperature is wa warming for five minutes and we know the rate at which it's warming. We should be able to predict the final temperature and the way that's done comes back to um, the fundamental theorem of calculus, part two, our old friend, fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Now that's the part that says that the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to capital F of b minus capital F of a where capital F is an antiderivative of small f. Or another way to say that is capital F prime equals small f. Now, what we're going to do is rearrange the terms on this a little bit. So I'll let you work out the signs, but I could just rearrange the terms, uh, start by uh, subtract, I, I could add the f of a to both sides and then switch the sides of the equation. And what I would end up with is capital F of b equals capital F of a uh, plus the integral from a to b of little f of x dx. Now all I've done is rewrite the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now we're going to do another little sleight of hand. Since this little f is the derivative of this function, so I'm just going to change the notation. Instead of calling this function little f, I'm going to go back to calling this function little f. So this is just a notation change. This is a different little f. This little f is the same function as that. I'm just changing his name. This is like instead of calling him uh, Big Bob, I'm calling him Little Bob now but he's still Bob. And that also means though that this function in here has to be the derivative of that function. So this has to be f prime of x dx. Now that's an a and I'm sorry that's a little hard to read there but that's an a. All right, now when you write the fundamental theorem of calculus this way, I'll just rewrite it one more time, where we say f of b equals f of a plus the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx. This form of the fundamental theorem is so useful as a special name, it's often called the accumulation form because it's talking about how this function gets from a point A to a point B by accumulating value through the integral. Uh, this form up here, where we have the two capital F's and we're subtracting, that's often called the evaluation form because uh, this form, this is the form that allows us to actually evaluate an integral. This form, if you look at what's going on here, it really allows us to predict a future value of the function. This is like a future value of the function. If we think of b as being a time, a time b in the future. And this is a present value of the function. So a is the time that we're at now, b is the time in the future, and we're going to say we know the value of this function in the future at the point b by adding up the rates of change, so by doing the integral of the derivative. So remember the integral and the derivative somehow cancel each other out, right? And this is the form in which that happens, that in a sense this integral from a to b of f prime of x, it's the difference between f of a and f of b. All right, so that's what we're going to use, and it actually is fairly direct how this is going to give us the answer to this question. So in our part D, um, it tells us that W prime of T is equal to 0 0.4 square root T cosine of 0 0.06 T. 
and it asks us what is the temperature of the water at time t equals 25. So the temperature of the water at time t equals 25 says we are asking what is w prime of 25. Sorry, w of 25. The temperature of the water is w, so we're looking for w of 25. So we could use this formula. We sort of have everything we need here. F of b, that's the w of 25 that we're looking for. So we're going to use a equals 20 and B equals 25. And we can see that right here where the T goes from 20 to 25. So that tells us that the A is 20 and the B is 25. So our F of B, that's the W of 25. That equals our A is 20, so that's W of 20, um, plus the integral from A to B, so that's the integral from 20 to 25 of F prime of X. Well, for our problem, that's W prime of t dt. So uh, now we know some of these things because uh, we know what w of 20 is because that's on our chart. It's right here. When, when t is 20, w of t is 71. So we know that w of t is 71.0. So that's 71.0 right there. This w of 25 is what we're trying to get a handle on. Oh, I have two equal signs now. That's good. That makes it doubly equal. Now, I have to deal with this integral from 20 to 25 of w prime of t, and they told us that what w prime of t is. Our w prime of t is this. So I can plug that in right here. And I can say that's the integral from 20 to 25 of 0 0.4 square root t cosine of 0 0.06 t dt. And there's a plus sign right there. Now, this integral looks difficult to do. Fortunately, a graph and calculator is required for these problems. This is a calculator active question. So that means I can do this integral on my calculator. It's 71.0 plus, so we now can just go to our calculator and we need to do an integral. So that's math 9 for the integral, or math you can scroll down to the fn int, but we can just hit math 9. And we've got our integral to fill in. We want 20 to 25, so from 20 to 25. And now we need to put in this function, 0.4 square root t, so uh, shift square root. We're using x instead of t in our calculator. We need to arrow over to get out of the square root uh, feature. Cosine, and we need 0 0.06t. We don't need that leading zero. 0 0.06, and we're going to put x. And we need to close a parentheses for that. And that looks like we've got our whole function and closed in parentheses. So we've got open parentheses, open, close, close. And now we just need to put our x for dx. Um, one thing we want to do before we do the integral is your calculator for this problem, it, unless there's a reason to be in degrees, we need to be in radians. That's going to be matter because I'm doing a cosine. So I'm doing a cosine, I need to pay attention to whether I'm in degrees or radians. So I'll just check my mode, make sure I'm in, oh, I'm in radians, that's good. If I were in degrees, I would have to change it, uh, but I'm not, I'm in radians. So I can keep it, and then I just go quit, and now I can do my integral enter, and it tells me it's 2.043. So this is plus 2.043. Remember for our AP uh, free response question, we want three decimal places rounded or truncated. So in this case, whether we round or truncate, we're going to get 0 0.043 for our three decimal places. So now I know that W of 25 is equal to 73 0.043. And if you want to do this part on your calculator, you can, but it's easy enough to just add those together. That's W of 25. So the question says, based on the model, what is the temperature of the water at time t equals 25? So now since we know that W of 25 is equal to 73.043, we can say the temperature of the water at time t equals 25 is 73.043 degrees Fahrenheit. A nice temperature for my tub. Maybe I'd like it to be 73.047, but I'll, I'll go with 73.043. That's warm enough for me. I'll, I'll compromise with that. And there you go. That is part D. And we're now done with question number one of the free response questions from 2012.